This video is really for my oldest grandson, but you can watch it too. A few months ago, my grandson asked me if I don't believe in God, where did the universe come from? An excellent question, young man. Excellent question. Now, let's have a chat. Hello and welcome, children. I would love to have answered that question for my grandson when he asked it, but unfortunately, I did not have the opportunity. So I'm making this video in hopes that both you and he can see and learn about another perspective. I'm an atheist. I don't believe the universe was made by a god. And I don't think that there are any gods. Why don't I think God made the universe? First, we need to know what we mean by God. When my grandson says God, I know what he means. He means the Christian God, because he is a Christian. If you believe in a different God, think about how what I have to say might apply to your God and your ideas about where the universe began. But where did the universe come from? The short answer to that question is, I don't know. I don't know. No one does. Not even people who do believe in gods or say that God made the universe can answer this question. Here's what I mean. The Christian view of the origin of the universe is God made it. God spoke and the universe popped into existence. What did it look like? Certainly not like our universe. According to the Bible, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth is there even before God starts creating anything. So if God made the universe, he did it before he started creation. That's weird. Next, it says, Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Then, in verse 3, we have God's first act of creation. God says, Let there be light. But the earth and the water already exist. Where did they come from? Did creation begin before this? If so, why does the Bible say that this was the first day? It then says that God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and there was evening, and there was morning the first day. It's possible that God said, let there be earth, and let there be water, but the Bible just doesn't tell us about these things. But there's a lot of problems with this account. First, God doesn't make the sun and the moon until the fourth day. God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars. God set them in the vault of the sky to give light to the earth to govern the day and the night and separate light from darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. How could there be evening and morning on days one through three when there was no sun and moon to separate the day from the night until day four? What's more, when God said, let there be light on day one, where is this light coming from? There's no sun and moon and stars until day four. Next problem, what does God make on day three? <laughs> plants. That's right, plants. What do plants need to survive? Water, soil, and sun. Now the water and the soil already exist. They were there before God made anything. But what about the sun? God doesn't make the sun until day four. How do the plants survive without the sun? One possible answer is God just put a bunch of seeds in the ground and the sun came up one 24-hour period later. The seeds could survive a day without the sun couple problems with this answer. First, verses 12 to 13 say, The land produced vegetation, plants bearing seed according to their kind, and trees bearing fruit with seed according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening and there was morning the third day. It sure sounds like there are full-grown plants here, not just seeds. Possibly, God could just be envisioning what is to come except it says God saw that it was good, 
not God saw that it was going to be good. Now we come to the more serious problems, trying to make the Bible fit into reality. The earth is about 4.5 billion years old. We know this from radiometric dating of the rocks of the earth. The universe is about 13.7 billion years old. How do we know this? By measuring cosmic background radiation. We also know the universe is expanding. It's getting bigger. We can observe how the universe expands and estimate back to where it began. Just like when you see someone blowing up a balloon, and when you see them, they're almost finished, but you know that they started blowing it up about a minute ago because you know that's how long it takes to blow up a balloon. Or if you look at a teenager, you know that that teenager was a child 10 years ago because we know how much kids grow each year. Similarly, we can observe the expansion of the universe and from that figure out when the expansion started based on the rate at which it is expanding. And we observe this through changes in cosmic background radiation. This radiation is a form of light, it is the oldest light that we can see. Light travels at a constant speed. So when you see light, the further away you are from the source, the longer ago it was when what you were seeing occurred. For example, it takes about a second for the light to travel from the moon to the earth. So when you look at the moon, you are seeing what it was like one second ago. It takes about eight minutes for light to travel from the sun to the earth. When you look at the sun, never look directly at the sun. Use a telescope or binoculars or project an image of the sun onto a piece of paper. That is what the sun looked like eight minutes ago. Stars are millions of light years away. When you look at the stars, you see what they looked like millions of years ago. And when we see cosmic background radiation, we see light from billions of years ago. That's how we get the age of the universe. So what does that have to do with how the universe started? While we don't know what caused the universe to start expanding, we do know much of what the universe was like right after the expansion started. Two things that didn't exist then were water and earth. Water will come about a billion years later, and the earth won't come for another seven and a half billion years after that. What does exist at the moment after the expansion of the universe begins, the Big Bang, is light. Light is here at the start of it all. So where does that leave us with the biblical account of creation? Light comes first, just like the scientists who study the origins of the universe tell us, right? Partly right, because yes, this was at the beginning, but the Bible had the earth and the water existing even before the light existed. We know this is inaccurate. Next, when the Bible says day, does it mean a 24-hour period like we call a day? We know this can't be right. If the world was made in six days by what we call days, then people would be on the earth just six days after the earth came to be. This also is not the case. Humans have only been on the earth for about 200 million years. Some Christians say the word day in the Bible means a period of time, and this brings us back to the plant problem. If God made plants in the third time period, however long that period may have been, the plants would all die. They have no sunlight. Not to mention the fact that the sun is 4.6 billion years old, a little older than the earth. The Bible just doesn't get the order of the formation of the universe right. What's more, the Bible doesn't even agree with itself on the order of creation. Look at Genesis 2, 5 through 8. Now no shrub had appeared on the earth, and no plant had yet sprung up, for the Lord had not yet sent rain on the earth, and there was no one to work the ground. But streams came up from the earth and watered the whole surface of the ground. Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. Now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east, in Eden. According to chapter 2, God made man before the plants. So which one is it? Plants come on day 3 or day 6? At this point, you might be thinking, okay, Granny, but could a God not have caused the universe to start to expand? To this, I would say yes, that is possible. 
Since we don't know what caused the expansion to start, we can't rule out a supernatural beginning to this expansion. But if this is the case, we see no evidence in the universe for a supernatural being doing anything else. If there was a god there, this god is either gone or just not doing anything else, maybe sleeping. But since whenever we look to find an explanation for how something in the universe works, we always find a natural explanation, not a supernatural one. I see no reason to look for a supernatural cause for anything when a natural reason explains the answer. Where did the universe come from? It came from the expansion of what the scientists call the singularity. Scientists call the start of this expansion the Big Bang. This isn't a very good name because there was no bang, there was no explosion. It was just the start of the expansion. But I do know that at the beginning, there wasn't a God saying, let there be light, and then light with no source just popped into existence. And that, young man, is how we get a universe no God needed. Live your life. But you made it. Have a cookie.